Hi, I'm Catherine Lee and I'm the director of the Point Preschool at Oyster Bay. What does sustainability mean to you? Well, sustainability means to me a lot of things. Um, looking at the environment and how we help the environment, but also how we care for each other. And I found that as the children have cared for the environment, that they have nurtured and cared for each other as well. It's looking at where we get our resources from, so looking at fair trade and being responsible and ethical in our buying. What was the starting point for it for you? Where did your interest in sustainability come from? Uh, that's come from my mum and dad. When um, I was growing up, we didn't have a lot of things. Mum and dad um, couldn't afford a lot of things, so we always had things that were handed down and given to us by friends or relatives. Mum was great at sewing and knitting, and um, we would spend a lot of our weekends in my granddad's veggie patch and growing our own food. So a lot of that, that's sort of just been part of your life? Yeah, your very life. much. Yeah. And it was a beautiful childhood and I have really strong memories of connecting with the land and connecting with my parents, my brother and, you know, my um, grandparents. And I think that's what I'd like to bring to children as well. Do you think it's harder if someone hasn't had that upbringing yeah. to be sustainable and to really, I guess, to, to put that into practice? I think it's hard in that if you... Um, haven't had that experience with um, growing veggies, you might not know where to start, but I think all of us have had some sort of experience of caring for the environment and caring for each other. And I think if you look at your own interests, mm. that makes it a little bit easier and you can start with an interest you have, or you might find that um, one of the children might have a particular interest and you can start there. So Catherine, tell us a bit about the preschool. Well, the preschool was built in 1956 by a group of um, parents of Oyster mm -hmm. Bay. We're community-based, not-for-profit. Yep. And up until a couple of years ago, we still had some grandchildren of oh, the wow. people who built the preschool still coming here, which is just lovely. Yeah, it's a really nice connection with the community. Oh, beautiful connection. We've still got um, neighbours across here. Yep. Um, Norma, she's been involved with the preschool since 1956. Oh, wow. And she still comes over and supports us. Oh, fantastic. Okay. And how long have you been here? Um, this is the end of 14 years. So has it always been like this? No, not always. Um, when I first came here, it had the established trees, mm -hmm. um, a lot of concrete um, okay, yep. and a lot of dirt. Right. Um, but a very loved um, preschool. Mm -hmm. and. Since um, I arrived, um, we've done small projects with the children and with the families involved and just looked at a small area at a time. Okay. So it's been quite a gradual process? Very gradual. Yeah. At first we thought we'd like to do the whole preschool, um, yep. but then we realised it was just more exciting and meaningful to have the children and the families involved. Mm. And so it's okay. been a slow project yep. over those years and we've still got lots more we'd like to do. Was it something that you wanted to do when you came here or did it develop after you'd started? It was something I wanted to do when I came here because I think I saw the potential mm -hmm. of what could be here because it was particularly up this area, a bit of a blank canvas. Yep. And um, just with my own personal hobbies and life is just connecting with nature and this was an amazing space that we could do that. Yeah, and okay. so the children were very excited when this was our first project here, yep. the fairy garden. This oh, was just okay. dirt yep. and the children felt that they could um, make something in here and bring it to life and um, we talked about what we should do and a little boy's idea was to make it a fairy garden. Yep. Oh beautiful. beautiful. Mm. Really it's quite a small space. I think it feels bigger because it's broken up but it's yeah. not like you've got a, a football size field no, no. to work with. No, not at all and um, sometimes like with only 20 children, mm. um, there could be a few children up in the amphitheatre, some are on the climbing frame, some might be playing on the grass or in the sand pit. It just does spread the children mm. out because there are particular areas and those areas sort of tell the children what you do there as well. Yeah. So a lot of times they come out and play and they don't need additional equipment. Mm. They can just play in the playground and that's just enough equipment for them. Yeah. Did you have a master plan or did it just kind of evolve? We did have a master plan, but now when I look back, it's probably nothing like that. <laughs> <laughs> because um, different families came with different strengths. Yes. Um, we had a dad who was a landscaper, so he helped us with the amphitheatre mm -hmm. up there and the project that we did with the Durrawal elders. Um, another um, couple of mums were um, doing mosaics, so yep. they helped us with mosaics, things like that. So it, it has evolved. Yeah, yeah, and really depended on who's been here yeah. at the time. And the children have had ideas too. Yeah. So we've incorporated those ideas. Each year we have different families who are really willing 
to help um, on big projects um, and throughout the year um, parents come up every fortnight do a bit of work in the garden with their children um, we have a couple of major working bees yep. um, but yeah Fantastic. always very supportive so tell us about some of the things that you've got here. I mean, I noticed the water tanks and a few things like yes. that. What else is here? Well, we've got three frog ponds. Okay. They're just over here. Yep. Um, and they're sort of just hidden in the nursery. And that's for um, safety, not only for the children, but also safety for the frogs. For the frogs. Yep. Yep. Um, and this is the nursery where children do a lot of propagating of succulents here. Yep. And Fantastic. they sell aloe vera. And so they do the propagating of the aloe vera okay. as well. <laughs> we've got another frog pond over here. Um, in, which is in the ground oh, yeah, okay. and we've got our three worm farms over here as well Yep. Um, and we've got nesting boxes so um, oh, what do you get in those oh well, on this side yes. just up here we've got two rosellas oh, and beautiful. Bradley from Bush Care tells us that they usually mate for life and we think they're the same ones since oh, 2005 keep coming back. yeah wow. There was coming back and in the nesting box on the other side we've got um, a mother possum and a baby possum at oh, wow. the moment fantastic yeah so the children have planted a little bit of parsley just down on the other side oh, for um, the possums to eat yes so that they pop down there <laughs> eat that and so they don't go to our strawberries right okay oh well, yeah, it's good to distract them <laughs> our children bring the scraps out they sort their scraps um, into compost or recycling or you know into the worm bin and then after lunch they bring those out to the worms so mm. they have that real connection that's how it becomes embedded when you get the children doing those sort of things. Yeah, I was going to say a lot of what you're doing seems to come from the children yes. as well as coming from you as the adults. Well we find if the children are interested in something then they're more likely to want to be involved mm -hmm. and that sparks our interest as well and they're very interested a lot in what we're interested in too so children will ask me is there washing to put out today? They'll ask Lydia, um, you know, are we going to have play with clay today? Um, because they know Lydia's got a real interest in clay. I've got an interest in the washing line, you know, that sort of thing. So, but other times they'll suggest things, you know, that they've seen um, happening at home or out in the community and then together um, we work on that. Mm -hmm. Looking around the centre, one of the things I noticed straight away is just the sheer amount of natural materials. Mm -hmm. Um, inside, you know, the tables are set up very much for natural materials. There was clay, there was ochre for painting with, yes. there are, you know, sticks and, and pieces of log cut up rather than necessarily all the standard building blocks. Mm -hmm. That's obviously a deliberate decision. Yes, very deliberate. And also it's a monetary decision. We don't have a lot of money to buy a lot of resources and when there's things that are available that um, just outside our gate or in our playground, we make use of those as well. And also I think it enhances um, and complements um, the other materials and equipment that you're using with the children. These tree branches, they cut down a couple of trees just a couple of days ago when they were doing some work in the park and so um, the landscapers just popped them over the fence for us. So the children are going to um, build a cubby and we thought we might be able to use yes. some of the branches for that and they're yep. using some of them in art and with clay work today. Do you see a difference in the way the children use those materials? Yeah, I do. Um, I think they use their imagination. Um, uh, their building, particularly with the blocks, can be a lot more elaborate when you add tree branches and um, cut up logs to it. Um, and I see with the clay too that they're um, actually modelling things that they see outside. So they're building rocks or trees or animals and sometimes that can be a little bit different when they're using other materials. What you do isn't just inside the preschool, you do quite a bit over the fence, out yes. in the community, out the even gate. if it is just on the yeah. other side. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. We've joined it with um, Sutherland Shire Council with Bush Care this year mm -hmm. and that we've been involved with them for a few years now on tree planting day yep. but we the children have enjoyed it so much we wanted that to continue and be a regular thing and so that we could get to know Bradley who's the Bush Care officer um, a lot better yep. so once a month on a Wednesday we go out for Bush Care and um, the children are just loving it it's something they really look forward to. Bradley Van Lutz my name and I'm a Bush Care officer with Sutherland Shire Council. I uh, work with the kids here at the Point Preschool once a month doing bush care work. Jobs related to bush regeneration, mulching, weeding, planting, planting local native species grown at our local nursery. So they've got a, a great little garden out the back there where they have, um, uh, they're outside uh, quite a bit of the time but out here it's 
sort of beyond the boundaries of the preschool. They get to experience a bit more of our, our local bushland. They talk about bush care after the days that they've come out with me. Uh, they, seem, they seem to be asking more relevant questions rather than just telling me that they've got a cat. They'll be able to tell us that they've got a gum tree or um, yeah, they went for a bush walk and it relates back to what we're doing here. And you work very closely with the local Aboriginal community as well? Yes, we do. How is that? I mean, does that mesh with the sustainability? Oh, very much so. so. Um, Les Bursell, who's one of the Darawal elders and a good friend of the preschool, he always talks to the children about how, um, before white settlement, how beautiful Australia is and how it's part of our responsibility to be able to keep the land beautiful. And that's what the children are trying to do here within the fences of the Point Preschool, but also outside. Um, and he gives the children a really good understanding about looking after the environment for ourselves and also for our community. It seems to me that lots of what you're doing, it's not necessarily big things, it's lots of little things that are adding up to that sort of sustainability overall. Yeah, lots and lots of little things. But I think when you put them together, mm. it um, creates a really wonderful connection yeah. with the children and with the educators and you know just what's outside our door as well um, and it does make the day really enjoyable and gives a lot more meaning to what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Lots of the parents tell us that the children take home some of the ideas from here and they want to have a veggie patch or a worm farm or they just want to spend time with their families outdoors and that's definitely strengthening relationships. What do you say to someone who's really just not sure where to start, not sure where to get information from, not sure what the right way to go is? Well, I think within your own team, you've got a lot of knowledge um, and somebody else might have a connection with one of their friends or somebody in the community or just within your families. So I think having a plan is a good yep. start. Um, and as I mentioned before, an area you're interested in, mm. you just have to decide what area do you want to start in. And sometimes it's monetary that mm. is a focus. Um, and then other times it might be growing vegetables. Um, another time it just might be having a look at, you know, what cleaning products you use. But pick an area and start from there. And there's lots of information available on the internet. There's lots of great resource books available. Um, and you can connect with an environmental group. And there are always lots of support there.